Mario Brothers 3 and Super Mario World are two of the best games of all time. I mean, seriously, take a look at any best game of all time list, and these two are always near the top. And a fun debate is always, which one of these games is better? I have always firmly been in the Super Mario Brothers 3 camp, so I decided that maybe it'd be fun to reevaluate my opinion. See maybe if uh, Super Mario World's better. And um, by reevaluating my opinion, I mean pissing off a bunch of Mario fans and receiving a bunch of troll comments and death threats. It should be fun. Super Mario Bros. 3 was released in Japan in 1988, and it wasn't until 1990 that we even got to play it. The funny thing is, is that Super Mario Bros. 2, you know, our Super Mario Bros. 2, was released just weeks before this was released in Japan, so that's kind of funny. And of course, we didn't get to play Super Mario World until 1991, where Japanese gamers got to play this the same year that we got Mario 3. Doesn't really matter though, because in the end, we got to play both and we loved both games. While there are so many different aspects of Mario 3 and Mario World to compare, one of the biggest and most easily identifiable difference without digging too deep is the graphics. Super Mario Bros. 3 is an 8-bit game and Super Mario World is a 16-bit game. I'm playing the All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. 3 because I want to, damn it. Both games look really good on their respective systems. For some reason though, I always thought Super Mario World looked a little more bland. Super Mario Bros. 3 has that really cool style to it, with the hardware that holds up platforms or screws that hold together giant blocks. It was confirmed by series creator Shigeru Miyamoto that 3 was actually supposed to be a stage play. Super Mario World, on the other hand, doesn't have that same approach to its art direction. That makes it a little less imaginative in my opinion. The game still looks really good, it just doesn't have that same charm to it. Super Mario World and Super Mario Bros. 3 both have very different enemy sets. Sure, enemies like Koopas, Cheap Cheeps, Bullet Bills, bob and Boo Buddies are all in both, but where Mario 3 tends to have a greater variety of Goombas and Piranha Plants, World uses a bunch of new dinosaurs and trap-like enemies that weren't seen previously. There really doesn't seem to be a strength one way or the other. Both games integrate their enemies very well into level design and gameplay. One edge Super Mario World does have is that enemies are animated so much better due to the 16-bit hardware. Sure, the designs on the characters in Super Mario Bros. 3 are great, but the limited frames of animation don't really breathe nearly as much life into them as World is able to with the new SNES. Super Mario World adds some new gameplay features due to the expanded number of buttons on the Super Nintendo controller. Mario now has two jump buttons, one traditional jump and a new spin jump that allows him to destroy blocks when he's under the influence of a super mushroom, and even jump on spiky and otherwise dangerous enemies that he couldn't jump on with his normal jump. This adds new variety to gameplay and gives players new angles to take when tackling different enemies in sticky situations. Looking up will also allow Mario to kick a turtle shell straight up into the air, giving him more options in puzzle solving and Koopa combat that wasn't available in Mario 3. Scrolling ahead or behind Mario is also possible with the L and R buttons. These options give the player just a bit more control than was allowed on the NES. Of course, Super Mario World introduces Mario's dinosaur pal Yoshi, and it's a huge addition to gameplay. Yoshi comes in four varieties. The standard green, the fire-breathing red, the flying blue, and the earth-shaking yellow. Super Mario World takes a different approach to the music than Super Mario Bros. 3, and honestly, neither are better than the other. I love both soundtracks about equally. Super Mario World uses one melody and creates weaves of different tracks around that melody for different level situations. Caves, castles, air-based platforming stages, normal outdoor stages, water levels, they all use the same melody, but make them all feel like their own tunes. Super Mario Bros. 3 has a timeless soundtrack as well, and while it doesn't use the one melody to tie it all together approach, it still sounds great. Each tune fits its area appropriately, and I love the cave tunes that recall the original underground music from the original Super Mario Bros. One big downside to Super Mario Bros. 3 is the inability to save. It's a long game, and if you want to see everything, you gotta sit down and beat it in one sitting. 
No saving allowed. Super Mario World fixes this and allows players to save after ghost houses, castles, and other secret levels. No longer did players have to sit down for hours just to experience everything. They could play the latest Mario adventure in bits and pieces. Super Mario All-Stars gives players the ability to save in Super Mario Bros. 3. So if that's a hang-up you have about playing the game, play this version instead. It isn't any different other than the graphics, and it looks better. Super Mario Bros. 3 brought a new feature to the Mario series, an overworld map that allowed players to pick the next level they would play. Each world has its own separate world map, each with a different tune. World 1 is Grassland, the standard Mushroom Kingdom looking area. World 2 is Desert Hill. World 3 has a water theme, so on and so forth. This made levels in each world unique and fun, and you always want to play the next level to see what it does with the world's theme. Super Mario World, on the other hand, uses one big world, instead of themes such as an ice world or a world of pipes. Everything happens in Dinosaur Land. Each area within Dinosaur Land has a loose theme, such as the Caves of the Vanilla Dome or the Forest of Illusion. They aren't as drastically different from each other like the levels in Mario 3 are. I actually like how Mario 3 approaches the world system better. Having more varied worlds makes for a more interesting adventure in my opinion. By the end of Super Mario Bros. 3, you feel like you've traveled a long way to Bowser's Castle, seeing so many different worlds. Super Mario World does feel more cohesive, however, so levels seem to continue to build off each other until the end of the game. It just doesn't give you that same sense of grand adventure, though. Mario World made levels longer. In Mario 3, stages are actually fairly short. In some cases, the shorter levels in Mario 3 are actually kind of lame. They don't really give you a lot to look at or be excited about, and you can pretty much just sprint through them if you want. Mario World doesn't really have the same kind of problem. Each level is large and has a lot to see and do, but it does give you the same option to kind of skip through a level, provided you have a cape and know how to float. This is actually kind of a sticking point for some people. The raccoon tail in Mario 3 doesn't give you the automatic ability to fly through the entire level. You know, unless you get one of the limited number of P-Wings that show up throughout the game. The cape, however, seems like it's kind of overpowered. It doesn't take a lot of skill to be able to skip through a level that's giving you troubles just by flying through it. But I see it this way. Mario 3's levels are much shorter and the types of levels that you would be able to completely fly through with a cape-like item, you can pretty much sprint through as I mentioned earlier. Sure, you still have to avoid hazards and enemies, but getting through a short level quickly with the tools Mario 3 makes available to you can be just as easy as floating through a flat level in Super Mario World. And that brings us to another point. The stages in Super Mario World are designed to be played through several times. Stages that show up on the map with a red dot mean that there are multiple exits to find. Get through the obvious end for the normal exit, but a secret exit that's going to be harder to find or figure out requires a second playthrough. So with the cape situation that we were talking about before, sure, you can fly through these levels to get to the main exit, but the secret exit won't let you get by that way. Super Mario Bros. 3 only allows players to play through each stage once. If you want to go back and search for secret areas, you'll have to reset the game and get back to that point again. In most cases, secrets in Mario 3 stages are only extra coins and one-ups though, with the occasional suit item sprinkled in. Mario World has these same coin and one-up secrets, but again, you can find secret exits to each of these stages too. One may argue that the shorter levels encourage players to do a little bit more exploring since it's not so overwhelmingly large that finding the secret could be anywhere. So players will romp through a level, explore, find some secrets, and then they don't have to go back and play them again. And I think Super Mario World actually has the better approach. One of the big additions to Super Mario Bros. 3 is the ability to stock up on items to throw into an item bank for later use. Mario can visit mushroom houses, play minigames, and receive enclosed items from the princess between each world to stock up on single-use items that can be accessed from the world map. So if Mario finished a level as small Mario, he can browse through his inventory and power up before taking on the next stage. Super Mario World nixed the idea of an inventory in favor of using a reserve item system. 
Instead of having an inventory of a bunch of extra items, Mario can carry a second power-up with him, so if he gets hit and becomes small Mario during gameplay, he'll be able to access the stocked power-up, a mushroom, a fire flower, or a cape feather. He can also use the backup item to switch between the cape and a fire flower to tackle different situations with the ideal weapon. Which works better? Well, the item inventory wouldn't really work in Super Mario World. And Super Mario Bros. 3 has a much larger catalog of items to use. And an inventory of Mushroom, Flower, Feather, Star would be kind of pointless, especially since players can go back and replay levels to grab an item if they need a power-up, then just pause and select out of the level without having to play through the entire thing again. Mario 3 has a lot more items, and therefore feels like there is more variety to the gameplay. While World has the Super Mushroom, Fire Flower, and Cape Feather, Mario 3 has a Super Mushroom, Fire Flower, Super Leaf, Frog Suit, Hammer Brothers Suit, and Tanuki Suit, giving players a bigger spread of power-ups to choose from. The addition of Yoshi kind of balances it all out for Super Mario World, however. Mario may have fewer power-up forms, but he can throw an additional layer of one of four colored Yoshis into the mix. Mario 3 also throws in items that can only be used on the world map, such as the Music Box, which puts Wandering Hammer Brothers to sleep, and Jugum's Cloud, which allows Mario to skip levels entirely. World doesn't have anything like this, but it doesn't really detract from the game at all. I rarely use the map-specific items when I play Mario 3 as it is, because I don't really want to skip levels or Hammer Brother encounters. When the game was newer and maybe a bit tougher, these items were more useful, but as I became more experienced, they just feel like filler. While the Koopalings in Super Mario Bros. 3 start gaining slightly different abilities as the game goes on, Super Mario World's versions of the Koopalings are a lot more varied and each presents a completely different challenge. Wait. Just freaking wait. This whole video just sounds like I'm going to admit Super Mario World is the better game. Whoa. I need to lay down. Ugh. I can't believe this. I'm supposed to love Super Mario Bros. 3 more. I like the art direction better, and I like the suits, the cool items, but everything else I like about Super Mario World. <sighs> oh man, even, even my top game list on www.brazzlethegamer.com has Super Mario World way behind Super Mario Bros. 3. I can't just change my opinion. What are people gonna think of me? I'm gonna throw up. Do you see what I'm saying, Doc? People don't just change their opinions over time. They're supposed to stay the same. People don't change. What do you mean this isn't a big deal? It's a huge deal. I'm supposed to be a Super Mario Bros. 3 fan. What do you mean you're not a real doctor? Oh! I get it. You're a dog turd. <laughs>